Welcome to KBRA Podcasts, where we cover topical research discussions, industry commentary, and more. Stay tuned for insight from our knowledgeable team members. Welcome to the KBRA fourth quarter 2022 Compendium Podcast, where we highlight key insights for the banking industry, but specifically KBRA's coverage universe. We are joined by Senior Director Leah Halfers and Director John Rempe, both in the Financial Institutions Group. I'm Managing Director Brian Roth, also in the Finances Team, and will serve as moderator for today's discussion. So Leah, in the fourth quarter compendium, KBRA compares how the U.S. banking industry for the one to 250 billion total asset banks is positioned compared to the 2000-2001 recession period. Our thoughts are that the anticipated economic weakness is likely to reflect this period with a short and shallow recession that followed rapid Fed interest rate hikes to guard against accelerating inflation. So Leah, can you describe the study that we conducted and what our conclusions were? Hi, Brian. Yes. So our study analyzed various loan mix and quality indicators for banks, as well as their loss absorption capacity from structural earnings. As of the third quarter of 2022, relative to the period following the early 2000s recession, our data set focused on banks with 1 billion to 250 billion in assets, and we set out to better understand how bank performance might trend should loan quality deteriorate from the current environment of very limited problem loans or credit issues. We found that compared to the 2001 downturn, the current loan mix is more commercially oriented with a greater proportion of commercial real estate loans and a smaller percentage of residential loans. And although the early 2000 recession was mild and short, according to the St. Louis Fed, commercial and industrial loans and consumer loans were among the worst performing segments. We also considered net charge-offs in the context of earnings and loss absorption capacity between the two periods. And as expected, following this extended benign credit environment, credit quality for the banks in our study is much stronger now than it was in the early 2000s. Loss absorption capacity is notably higher for banks currently, leaving them well positioned to absorb potential losses if NCOs were to reach those peak loss rates that we observed in the 2001 to 2003 period. And furthermore, our study found that while structural earnings are not as strong versus the early 2000s, secondary buffers, including tier one capital, is comfortably higher and loan loss reserves remain very solid currently. Another aspect of our analysis was delving into the current liquidity position of the bank group relative to the early 2000s, and what we concluded is that while total deposits have been waning as the Federal Reserve has continued its quantitative tightening, ample room remains before banks reach the levels of wholesale funding utilization that we observed in the early 2000s, and this is despite the gradual increases we've witnessed throughout 2022. For instance, looking at the data set from 2001 through 2003, wholesale funding comprised of FHLB advances, other borrowings, sub-debt, and broker deposits averaged approximately 27% of the funding mix for banks in both of our designated peer groups, which included 1 to 10 billion in asset banks and 10 to 250 billion in asset banks. And then as of the third quarter data, the average was 8% for banks with 1 to 10 billion in assets and 11% for banks with 10 to 250 billion in assets. So in summary, Brian, banks as represented by the aforementioned peer groups are better positioned from a loss absorption perspective should loss content increase and also maintain more favorable funding mixes versus the early 2000s. So Leah, I'm sure our listeners have found this analysis to be helpful as they consider the industry's current position relative to what is viewed as the most likely scenario, potential weakness. So John, I'll give you the second question. What were the key highlights for 4Q2022's financial performance? Were there any meaningful changes among the key financial metrics KBRA actively monitors? Good question, Brian. I'll just sort of go across the board here with regard to the key financial metrics that we analyze each quarter and try to keep it at a high level analysis. But to answer your last question, there were not any material changes quarter over quarter, but certain trends that continued. Um, First off, the median ROA continued to rise, which was on the back of persistent NIM expansion, as many banks continued to benefit from the rise in interest rates in the latter half of 2022. With a median ROA of 126, 
for 4Q22, I think this might be one of the highest levels of true core profitability in any quarter since we started doing the compendium, excluding the inflated levels of profitability following the pandemic from reserve releases. So that was definitely a good thing to see. Then with regard to credit quality, both MPA and NCO ratios remain very low, but increased modestly over the linked quarter. However, at this time, many of our banks are not seeing any signs of deterioration in their loan portfolios. This has been more of a normalization in credit quality metrics following the extremely low levels demonstrated in prior quarters. And then for capital management, core capital ratios, notably TCE and CET1, both trended higher sequentially, which was in part supported by the stronger earnings and internal capital generation recognized during the fourth quarter. Additionally, many banks' TCE ratios benefited from the slight decrease in bond yields during the quarter that resulted in a lower level of negative AOCI. And I think your next question focuses more on funding and liquidity, so I'll leave that one for Leah. But altogether, the key metrics for our banking universe remain strong, and our banks remain well positioned to endure any potential weakening credit environment, whenever that may be. Thanks, John. So Leah, next question to you. With the Federal Reserve having raised Fed funds by 425 basis points in full year 2022, has the KBRA rated universe begun to see a jump in deposit betas, and has it materially impacted net interest margin expansion that the industry has experienced in the rising rate environment? Are we seeing asset yields keeping up with funding costs, or are we expecting net interest margin for the industry to moderate and even contract in 2023? The NIM outlook and how bank teams are managing liquidity positions and funding costs remain very topical themes at present, and eventually credit quality may join that list, but so far has remained sound. But directly to your question, Brian, as we've discussed in our podcast throughout this year, most banks entered 2022 in an asset-sensitive position, and they continue to report strong results in spread lending businesses overall in the fourth quarter. After experiencing the long-awaited NIM expansion in earlier quarters, we have started to see that begin to moderate in hand with rising deposit costs. But for our rated universe, the median net interest margin increased by 10 basis points sequentially in the fourth quarter, and that was versus an increase of 22 basis points sequentially in the third quarter. And while still generally contained overall, we began to see more pronounced deposit cost increases emerge for banks with potentially less durable deposit franchises. And that's something we're particularly keeping an eye on. However, thus far, most of our banks have continued to experience NIM expansion, as John mentioned, and have managed to keep deposit betas fairly contained overall, with management teams remaining laser focused on preserving their core deposit bases. Thanks, Leah. Appreciate your insightful analysis. John, question number four to you. So as mentioned earlier, with the Fed's aggressive interest rate increases of 425 basis points to combat inflation, how has the higher rate environment impacted loan growth and overall loan demand for the KBRA coverage universe? Surprisingly, loan growth has been at very high levels over the past few quarters, and honestly, the strongest levels I remember seeing in quite some time. This has been to numerous reasons, the first being pent-up demand following the pandemic, as well as borrowers rushing to lock in financing before rates rise even further. And lastly, I think banks are trying to deploy the excess liquidity lingering from the pandemic to better improve overall profitability and earnings power before a potential recession. And here's some numbers for you. On average, KBRA-rated banks reported nearly 5% quarter-over-quarter loan growth in the fourth quarter. That would be approximately 20% annualized loan growth just in the fourth quarter, which compares to approximately 18% annualized in the third quarter, which is obviously still very high. Digging a little deeper into what loan segments demonstrated the strongest growth in the quarter, C&D multifamily and residential mortgages showed the most robust growth in fourth quarter 2022, with average growth of 6.8%, 6.6%, and 4.3% respectively over the linked quarter. Despite the recent growth in C&D in recent quarters, most KBRA-rated banks maintain a very conservative concentration of C&D lending, with a majority of our banks being below the regulatory guidance level of 100% of total risk-based capital. Additionally, the strong growth in residential mortgage is sort of a function of the market currently, as many banks are opting to maintain residential mortgages on balance sheet rather than selling them as a secondary market price and their gain on sale premiums have decreased considerably. So yeah, altogether, growth has been very strong in recent quarters. With that said, most banks are guiding to much slower loan growth in 2023 due to the continued rise in interest rates, as well as the lack of liquidity available in the markets. With most banks projecting for loan growth to fall 
to around mid-single digits in 2023 compared to double digits in 2022. Thanks, John. It seems like loan demand should slow. However, as you mentioned, with historically low unemployment and consumers still spending, loan demand has remained stronger than what we would have expected. Leah, the KBRA U.S. Bank Compendium includes a quarterly ESG bulletin where we highlight a bank in our coverage universe for their ESG focus. In the fourth quarter's compendium, we also featured a regulatory update on the Federal Reserve's board announcement of a public comment period for its drafts, principles for climate-related financial management for large financial institutions. Would you mind elaborating on this for our listeners? Sure, Brian. The proposed principles offer a high-level framework for managing and incorporating exposures to climate-related financial risks and pertain to financial institutions with over $100 billion in assets. The proposed principles are very much in line with those issued by the OCC and the FDIC in order to promote consistency in the supervision of large banks. The draft highlights the importance of an effective risk management framework in assessing these risks, which include both physical and transition risks in six key areas. These six key areas include governance, policies, procedures, and limits, strategic planning, risk management, data, risk measurement, and reporting, and scenario analysis. The draft was also open for public comment through February 6th. And from our perspective, Brian, as the ESG regulatory landscape evolves, we continue to believe that banks and other financial institutions will need to prioritize ESG risk management over the medium term. And we also remain engaged with banking institutions on their ESG policies and procedures. As always, we will continue to monitor new developments and share our insights on the topic. Well, thank you, Leah and John, for walking our listeners through KBRA's bank study, as well as the key highlights for the industry's financial performance for the fourth quarter of 2022. We would encourage our listeners to review the full compendium on our website at www.kbra.com, where you will also find all of our research. Thank you to our listeners for tuning in to KBRA's Bank Podcast. We look forward to speaking again next quarter. This concludes our episode. Please continue the conversation on LinkedIn and Twitter at Kroll Bond Rating. We'd also like to remind you that all of our ratings and research reports are available at kbra.com. Lastly, please share any feedback or ideas for future podcast episodes by emailing us at media at kbra.com. We hope to see you next time.